Hi, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to introduce the concept of a cross product and primarily just walk you through the formula for what it is and how we would use it. So the main idea here is that we're going to create a special operation for three dimensional vectors, that's vectors in R3, that will find a perpendicular vector. So it's gonna be handy for us to be able to find an orthogonal or a perpendicular vector. And that's why we're going to use the cross product. So let me show you just a little bit here with the graph. So let's say I'm drawing some vector A, it's going this way. And then I'll draw some vector B as well, going sort of back the other direction. So my hope here with these two vectors is that I want an operation that will find a vector that is orthogonal or perpendicular to both A and B. So we're gonna use this when we're talking about equations of planes in the future, but this is also just handy for lots of other things to be able to find perpendicular vectors. It'll help us just describe the space and describe what's going on in a lot of ways. So I'm gonna help you derive that formula now, and we're gonna just use arbitrary vectors. Let's say A is equal to A1, A2, A3, and B is equal to B1, B2, B3. So I'm just thinking about some arbitrary vectors A and B. Then we're going to define the cross product of A and B. This is this new operation that's going to make an orthogonal vector. So the cross product is this new vector given by, we write A cross B, and it's equal to, so this is gonna be a long formula, and just follow with me, I'll show you where it comes from afterward. So it's equal to a vector where the x component is a2b3 minus a3b2. The second component is a3b1 minus a1b3. And the third component is a1b2 minus a2b1. Okay, so this is a long thing, but... Thankfully, we have a shorter way to write it that we use. Specifically, it's called using determinant notation. Determinants are used with linear algebra when you start to learn that, but we kind of infuse it here just a little bit to help us do it now. So before I start talking about determinants, I just want to prove to you that this vector I wrote with all of these A's and B's, this cross product, I want to prove to you that it is orthogonal to A and B. So I'm just going to prove it's orthogonal to A, and a similar argument will follow for B. But basically, I've just given you this formula out of nowhere, and the best I can do for convincing you that it's true is to take this formula for the cross product and show it is orthogonal to my vectors that I wanted. So specifically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my vector and dot it with this new cross product. So when we take the dot product of two vectors, it should be equal to zero if they are orthogonal or perpendicular. So I'm really actually going to only do one of these because it just looks exactly the same basically to do the second one, and I'm going to leave that up to you to do if you'd like, but I'll show you the a dot a cross b computation. So what I do is I write down my vector a, a1, a2, a3, and I'm going to dot it with this long cross product formula that I wrote previously. And now I take the dot product. So I do the first component a1 multiplied by the first component of that long thing. So a1 times a2b3 minus a3b2. Then I do the y components multiplied. So a2 times the y component of the cross product. And then I do a3 times the z component. So I'm just computing the dot product here. And now it's just some yucky math. So I'm going to distribute everything. So I have a1 getting multiplied in, I have a2 getting multiplied in, and a3 getting multiplied in. So you'll see here that these terms are going to start canceling out. So I have an a1, a2, b3, both being added and subtracted. I have an a1, a3, b2, being both added and subtracted. And I have an a2, a3, b1, being both added and subtracted. So these all cancel out and I'm getting zero. So I have zero for my dot product, and that tells me that these vectors are orthogonal. So I don't know if that's really all that interesting. I just want to kind of like show you that 
maybe if you were trying to come up with this, you could have played around with the formula for the cross product long enough in order to get something that would work. So you could come up with something that you could take the dot product with our vector A and our vector B to get zero. And once you came up with that, then you would have the cross product formula. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is how to do this formula instead with determinants. So let me talk about what a determinant is, and when you see it, I think you're gonna agree that this is an easier way to remember that whole formula. So determinants are used in matrix algebra, also called linear algebra, and for here they give us a nice way to remember the cross product formula. So let me show you what a two-dimensional determinant looks like. We draw these vertical bars and we have things oriented in a matrix, A, B, C, D, and we do is multiply the diagonals and subtract. AD minus BC. So those vertical bars are what indicate the determinant, and this is the formula that we use, AD minus B times C. Okay, so I could show you an example. Let's do the determinant of 1, 7, negative 3, 4. So here I would do 1 times 4 minus 7 times negative 3, and then I would simplify. So I have 4 plus 21, that's 25. And so 25 would be the solution to this determinant. So now I can upgrade this concept to three dimensions. And when we do a three-dimensional determinant, this is where it's going to relate to the cross product formula, the ones with all those A's and B's and numbers in it. So this time I write x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2, and x3, y3, z3. So this is just like three rows of x, y, and z's. And how this works is I then take the first number, like the first value in the top left corner, so the x1, and I take the determinant of this bottom part of what's left. So I'm taking the determinant of that little bottom portion of y2, z2, y3, z3. So this is just how we determine, like this is how we do the determinant. So this is just like a formula. This isn't supposed to have like, at this point, any intuition. I'm just telling you the formula. I promise this will be useful in a moment. Then we do minus the next value in the top row. So minus a y1. And now we take the determinant of the other two parts. So x2, z2, x3, z3. And then we add it to the z1. That's the top right and we take the determinant of the bottom left parts, x2, y2, x3, y3. So how we are going to apply this to our specific cross product notation is we're going to replace one of the rows with a1, a2, a3, and the other row with b1, b2, b3. And this is going to get us our cross product, which is a much better way to write it out than having that complicated formula to remember. So we're gonna use determinant notation with a, the vector a, and the vector b. And so to do this, we write that the cross product, a cross b, is equal to the determinant, where we write i, j, k on the first row, and then we have a1, a2, a3 on the second row, and b1, b2, b3 on the third row. So taking the determinant of this matrix, this i, j, k, with the a and b rows, this determinant will then be what we are looking for for our cross product definition. So I'm going to prove it to you by just walking through the steps of how you do the determinant, and we'll get back to that original complicated looking thing we had with the A2s, B3s, A1s, B3s, etc. So let's do the cross product, let's practice it with determinants on this, and I'll show you how we get back to our original definition. So the way the cross product works is we set up I first, and we take the determinant of what's left in the bottom right hand corner, A2, A3, B2, B3. Then we subtract off J, times the determinant of the bottom parts that are left, so a1, a3, b1, b3, and we add it to k times the determinant of the bottom left, a1, a2, b1, b2. 
Now I'm just computing a bunch of these two-dimensional determinants. So for the i part, I do the diagonals subtracted, a2b3 minus a3b2. So this might start looking familiar to our original formula. Then I subtract j times the determinant, which is again the diagonals, a1b3 minus a3b1. Then I add it to k times this final determinant, a1b2 minus a2b1. Then with the way i, j, and k work, I can just put the i parts in for the x, the j parts in for the y, and the k parts in for the z. So I can write this as a vector, a2b3 minus a3b2. Then I have this negative here, so I have negative a1b3 plus a3b1. And finally, I have a1b2 minus a2b1. So this is almost what we're looking for. It's just that middle part is backward. So I'm just gonna swap those two so that I have a3b1 minus a1b3. And now I have my original definition of the dot product. So doing this determinant notation is going to make it a little easier for us. It might not feel that much easier since it's a new thing to learn on top of everything else, but knowing how to do determinants will be helpful for you if you take any linear algebra or matrix algebra courses in the future. Okay, so that's it for this video. I will go through some examples with specific vectors and finding their cross products in another video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.